Hi, you're watching a broadcast series entitled, Come, Let's Reason Together. I'm Tony Stanier, and I'll be joining you for the next hour as we learn how to facilitate in sharing one's faith with those who are skeptical about the Bible and the faith that it demands. I'd like to welcome our studio audience here. Welcome, Poyo. And you, our viewers and friends. You know, the Christian faith can be traced back to its historical origins or its founder, who is Jesus Christ. But the application of faith to a biblical God can be drawn back or even dated back to the days that are found and recorded in the book of Genesis. Through the years and, and, and through the ever-evolving cultures that we have in our societies, the definition of faith has changed because it is flooded by the different schools of thoughts. But in our postmodern culture, we have reduced faith to the power in believing in something that is not true. But the dictionary clearly defines that faith is a firm belief in something that cannot be proven. A belief that is not based on, on, on material evidences or logic. In our program, we will show that reason is capable with and is essential to biblical Christianity. Let's now delve into reasoning with each other. I will now give the time to our speaker, Kuya Bing. Thank you, Tony. Um, as Tony has said, ito pong sharing ito na ibibigay namin sa inyo sa susunod na limang programa ay may kinalaman sa mga skeptiko, yung mga nagdududa sa pananampalataya. So, this will be an introduction to who God is, what kind of God He is, so that those who are doubting can be led eventually to the gospel. So before we even start this series, I'd like to invite you in the audience right now and those viewers to say a prayer with me as we talk to the author of reason himself. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank Thee for you are a God of omniscience. Never make mistakes. A God of reason, of logic. And in your grace, you've given us a mind to think, to reflect not only in your creation, but above all, to reflect on you. As we start this series, we pray that the Spirit will move so that the thoughts and ideas we will share will touch the hearts of people who are still on their way to knowing you. And doubts will be cast away. And the veracity of Christianity will shine that people might glorify you. Give us open minds and responsive hearts, even now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ngayong araw po, Ang mga tao nagsasabi, pag tinanong nyo, uh, bakit ka naniniwala sa Diyos? Bakit ka naniniwala sa Bible? Kadalasan, ang sagot na lang natin eh, eh, you just have to have faith. Ang problema po, pag nag-uusap-usap sa loob ng iglesia, pwede yun, tayong magkakapatid. Subalit pag pumupunta tayo sa mundo, kakausapin natin mga tao na walang kinalaman, hindi man lang dumadalo yan, hindi, hindi sumisimba, walang kamuwang-muwang sa may kapal. Uh, hindi nila maintindan ang sinasabi natin. Tapos tatawanan lang tayo na sabihin natin just to have faith. Tuloy ang iniisip ng mga tao, ang mga Kristiyano hindi nag-iisip, hindi ginagamit ang kanilang minds. The distinction between a man and an animal is a remarkable mind that God has given to us. Yung pong pag-iisip na yon, tinatawag nating reason, was given by God not only for us to appreciate nature, but to appreciate God himself. Kaya, Miss nagsabi, the term thinking Christian should not be an oxymoron. Sabi nila kasi, pag Kristiyano ka dahil, you exercise faith, you don't use your mind. But really, truth be told, pag hindi mo ginamit ang pag-iisip mo, hindi mo maunuan, hindi mo makikilala ang Diyos. Let's look into some verses to introduce us into this concept. Reason from the scriptures. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into to them and for three Sabbaths reason with them from the scriptures. Isa sa pinakamagaling at pinakamalawag na ibanghalista, the greatest evangelist in the New Testament, moved towards Europe and Asia Minor to spread the gospel. 
and the description of the scriptures, every time he goes to a city and a place, is that he reasoned with people from the scriptures. Napansin niyo yung word na reason? Ginamit niya ang pangangatwiran, ang pag-iisip ng tao para maunawaan ng tao ang ibanghelyo at balita ng kaligtasan. Yung ating pong key text sa buong series ay galing sa Isaiah 1.18. Itong background po nitong kapitulong ito, the chapter background, is that God is talking to the children of Israel who has drowned themselves into idolatry. Sabi ng Diyos eh, will your idols listen to you? Those gods made of wood and metal, they will not listen to you. Let's reason together, talk to me. And ang ganda po ng balita doon, sabi, though your sins be as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Papatawarin ko kayo if you reason with me. Kaya importanteng importanteng gamitin natin ng ating reason, ng pag-iisip. Hindi natin maunawaan ang pabalita ng kaligtasan kung hindi natin gagan- gagamitin natin pag-iisip. Kung tutuusin, there's one thing that goes before the proclamation and acceptance and reception of the gospel. That's the use of our mind. And when we use our mind to understand, the Holy Spirit moves in our hearts. And then we begin to love God and receive Him. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the Scriptures. Paul did not just reason for the sake of reasoning. Paul reasoned, where? Sabi? From the Scriptures. Ang basihan, ang batayan ng kanyang mga argumento, ang kanyang pangangaral ay hindi lang basta ang kanyang pag-iisip. Ginamit niya ang katwiran at reason based on the scriptures para ipahayag ang mabuting balita ng kaligtasan. Sa so 2 Corinthians, matindi ang sabi natin pang, ang ating apostol. Sabi, we destroy arguments and every proud obstacle to the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Bawat pag-iisip daw dapat ipasakop. Bakit kailangan pasakop? Sapagat maraming balaki, there are so many obstacles to truth. Nalilinlangin tayo. Kaya kung ang ating pag-iisip ay ipapasakop natin sa Diyos. Anong mangyayari? Magkakaroon tayo ng karunungan upang tayo ay ingatan sa kalinlangan na ibibigay ng ating gaway. Meron din sinabi si Jude sa kanyang sinulat na aklat. I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. You don't need reason alone to understand the gospel. In the last days, there will be wolves coming to deceive man. And unless you're grounded in a reasonable faith based on the scriptures, you will be deceived. Eh, simple lang naman po yan eh. Kung ang doktor, niloloko ka, binigyan ka ng reseta, maling gamot. Pag ininom mo yung maling gamot, pwede kang mamatay. Eh, ganun ang ginagawa ng kaaway. Pagkahaluin ang katotohanan at kamalian. And when the deception comes in, if you're not grounded in reason and your mind is not captive to God, you will be harmed by the enemy if not killed. Ngayon, paano po natin papasimulan para maintindihan kung paano gamitin ang pag-iisip natin? Meron silang tinatawag na worldview, pananaw natin sa ating mundo, sa ating kapaligiran. Si James Sarr, in his very popular book entitled The Universe Next Door, is one of the foremost authorities on worldviews. His definition of a worldview is, it's a set of presuppositions which we hold about the basic makeup of our world. Everyone has a worldview. Whether one can explain it or not, it can be likened to a pair of glasses through which one views the world. It is important to have the right prescription or reality will be distorted. Whether you like it or not, lahat tayo, kayo mga nanunod, kayo nadintong sa audience, ay may pananaw sa mundo. Kahit na hindi nyo kaya ipaliwanag, even if you cannot explain it, you follow a certain viewpoint that controls the way you live and the way you view things. Example, punta ka sa grocery sa mall. Sabi mo, pwede ba dagdagan yung plastic bag? Sir, hindi na pwede yung plastic. Paano hindi na nagbibigay ng plastic ngayon dito sa Manila? Nung huli kasing bagyo, nung nagbaha, Nagbaray mga imbornal na dahil doon sa mga plastic. Worldview yan. Worldview, sabi, ingatan mo yung environment. Paano mamumurisyo ka? 
Tapos naglabas yung very controversial cyber law. Di ba? Nadinig yun. Konting mali dun sa social network, ididimanda ka na. No? Kaya nag-iingat, nagkakagulo-gulo pre. May amendments pa ata na inasikaso sa batasang pambansa. And then the, the, the very, very controversial law uh, to help improve the economy of the Philippines, which is the contraceptive law na pinagtatalunan sa buong bansa dito sa Pilipinas, is again a worldview that says if we keep on producing people without enough resources to support them, we will suffer as a nation. Yeah, worldviews have consequences. Whether you like it or not, meron kang paningin, pananaw sa mundo, na apektuhan lahat ng iyong ginagawa. Now, how do you construct a worldview? Wala tayong panundaanan ito, pero ang daming ng worldviews, okay? Kung, kung titignan lang ito, sa, tignan nyo sa internet, di Google nyo yung what is a worldview. This is published somewhere in Australia by a creative group of people. And you trace the main presupposition that God exists. And eventually, you will find where you are. Okay, to clarify this, there are four major worldviews today. Those are theism, naturalism, pantheism, and postmodernism. Na uh, nabanggit kanina ni Tony during the introduction. Uh, really, maraming aklat na nagsasabi, tatlo lang daw yung major worldviews. But I did not want to miss postmodernism because it's affecting not only the Philippines but the whole world. Apektado lahat ang paningin natin. And you will see how deadly and how dangerous postmodernism is. It is also important to understand that worldviews because they are, found, they are the foundation of all sabi? religions. Hindi lang pala pananaw yan sa environment, hindi lang yung pananaw sa buhay mo, sa kultura. Yan ay batayan, the very foundation of religion, your belief in God. That worldview will determine how you view God in your life. These are questions which we will once worldview. Why is there something rather than nothing? How do you explain human nature? How do you know that you know what happens to a person at death? How do you determine what is right or wrong? What is the meaning of history? Quiz! Name that worldview. Tignan natin kung maintindihan nyo kung ano ang mga worldview. Isa-isahin natin yung na-enumerate ko sa inyo so as we can have a bird's eye view of what it means na magkaroon ka ng pananaw sa iyong kapaligiran. The Christian worldview addresses the reality of God and man. And the foundations of a Christian worldview is what we call monotheism. Monotheism means there's only one God. And the creation ex nihilo, it is a creation out of nothing. Uh, it is based on revelation because men by searching cannot find God. Sabi ng Christian worldview, unless God reveals himself to you, you cannot know him. But God in his grace and his love revealed himself to you through the scriptures. Sabi din ng Christian worldview, we will not go into an endless cycle of history with no end. We will have a destiny, and that destiny will be a renewed earth na babaguhin ng dahil sa ginawa ng Diyos sa ating Panginoong Jesus. The other worldview is a naturalistic worldview, which solely looks at the world from the standpoint of man. Atheism and deism. Atheism means hindi ako naniniwala sa Diyos. A, without Theos, God. Or deism, ang paniwala nung deism as opposed to atheism na hindi naniniwala sa Diyos. In daw deism, ang tingin sa tao at saka sa mundo, para isang larawan na sinusiyan ng Diyos. After God wound us, no, matapos susiyan yan, pinakawala na lang ng Diyos para tumakbo sa kanyang sarili. So, we have a God that is detached. Either there is no God or a God that really doesn't care about us. Evolution, natinig na natin yan. Materialistic says... Ah, walang creator. Nag-evolve tayo from the simplest amoeba, from the simplest cell, and we develop into the crowning act of this evolutionary process, that which we call homo sapiens. Materialism, everything is by matter, unless you observe something through your senses. If you don't see it, you smell it, you taste it, or you feel it, it does not exist. Because there must be matter in order for something to be real. And then human autonomy, when human autonomy is I am the captain of my own soul, ako magdi-decide ko anong gagawin ko. Yun ang naturalistic worldview. Now, there's a pantheistic worldview where, whereas hindi pinaghiwalay ang God and men, 
pinagsama. They merge both God and man. And what are the foundations of a pantheistic worldview? Monism. Monism is a term, a technical term, for the belief that the entire universe is only one substance. It may be an energy, it may be a force. Kaya ang mangyayari, pag namatay ka, what happens? You just become subsumed into that force. You become one with that substance. Nadidinig niya, kaya lagi kayo nadidinig ng karma, tsaka nirvana. Yung mga teaching ng Eastern religions is we eventually become part of that one monistic substance in the world. Pantheism is a belief that we are all gods. Yeah, di ba may pan? Pag sinabing pan-Americano, pan-panis. Everything, pantheism, pantheos means you're a God, I'm a God. Everywhere is a God. Yeah, there's a God in you. Yung nagpa-practice mga transcendental meditation, meron silang tinatawag na mantra. They call a God. Yung mantra nila is the name of a God and they keep on repeating the name of the God while they're doing transcendental meditation. What are they doing? They're worshiping that God because sabi dun sa transcendental meditation, if you delve into yourself, go deep into yourself, you will find the God in you. And you become God yourself. Kilala niyo siguro yung one of the main advocates of this is Shirley MacLaine, who has hooked up with Oprah Winfrey and Eckhart Tolle. And uh, the Eastern mysticism is their pantheism, where we become gods ourselves. Uh, that's why there's human divinity. And then, reincarnation. What's reincarnation? It's a teaching that somehow you come back after you die. And depending on the way you behave in this life, you come back worse or better in the next life. You go to an endless cycle of purification. Uh, sabi ko, turo lang ba yan sa mga Eastern religions? And I thought about it. Alam nyo ba, pagigising kayo sa umaga, marami sa inyo ang nalalagas. Lahat tayo nalalagas. Natatandaan ko nung natutulog pa ako, banig ang tinutulogan ko. Di ba patapos kang gumising sa umaga at titiglupin mo yung banig? Pag tinayo mo yung banig, ano makikita mo doon sa sahig? Alikabok. Sabi ng mga scientists, we shed dust from our bodies every day. Okay? <laughs> tapos, hindi lang yung mga, tatapos-tapos tatap, lang ng todos los santos, pupunta ka sa simenteryo. Meron daw, sino ba nagkwento sa akin noon? Meron daw sa simenteryo, inilalagay mo na lang sa isang butas yung kabaong. Tapos because of uh, the way the coffin is made, magiging incinerator yung coffin. Makikremate yung body within. Ano mangyayari pag nakakaw na cremate o nabulo ka? Gagawin kang fertilizer. Pagkatapos kang fertilizer, pupunta yung fertilizer sa mga halaman. Tapos yung halaman, kakainin ng hayop. Pagkatapos kainan ng hayop, lalaki yung halaman, nanggaling sa iyo yun. Yun ang western view ng reincarnation. <laughs> Nagsa-cycle tayo yung lahat. Ganun ba talaga ang worldview? Eh, yun ang tinatawag nilang foundations of pantheism. Yan, dinagdagan ko ito. Nabanggit na na konti ni Tony kanina. Yung postmodern worldview. There's one word that describes postmodernism. What is the word? Sabi nga nila, whatever. <laughs> what? Ever. Okay. Whatever. Ano mag mo? Whatever. Saan mo gusto mo pumunta? Whatever. Ano gusto mo kaya na? Whatever. Yan ang postmodernism. Kaya it becomes a mindless and senseless game. A worldview that does not have any reason to it. Why? What are the foundations of postmodernism? There is no objective truth. Kung anong tama sa'yo, okay yan. Kung hindi tama sa akin, okay din yan. Pag gusto mo, 2 plus 2 equals 5. Okay yan. 1 plus 1 equals 3. Hey, kahit na mali ako, I have my rights. <laughs> yung walang mali. Uh, sabi nga ng isa kong paboritong writer and speaker, si Erwin Lutzer, we've come to the very egotistic notion that everybody's entitled to their opinion to the fullest notion that everybody's opinion are equal. Hindi pwede. Pag may itim, may puti. Hindi sa pala sa puti, ha? Pag may masama, eh, tama. Eh, bibigyan ko kayo ng example. Sabi ng isang babae, hindi ako naniniwala sa murder. Pero pag inconveniente na nabuntis ang isang dalaga out of wedlock para mawala yung kahiyan at yung prohisyo, 
Palaglag natin yung bata. Pag napalaglag natin yung bata, okay na. Sabi ng kausap niya, ibig ko masabihin, pwede yung palaglag yung bata. Paano yung bata? Hindi pa tao. Ay, hindi, tao na yung bata. Eh, pero inconveniente. Ay, ibig mo sabihin, magnakakita ako ng isang bata sa lansangan. 3-4 years old na bata na sa lansangan. Eh, walang matirhan. Palaboy-laboy. Grabe. Pinahihirapan lang ang culture tsaka yung society. Ba, hindi natin patayin yung bata. One guy has said, in some cultures, they respect you. In other cultures, they eat you. Based on personal preference, which would you choose? Postmodernism is okay. Kumain sila <laughs> ng tao. Kami naman masaya dito. That's why it's become very senseless. There are no moral absolutes when it comes to postmodernism. And there's religious pluralism. Okay yan. Gusto mo, ganyan paniwala mo. Ganto paniwala mo. Let's get along together. Yun ang postmodernism. So, ang tanong mo, this is skeptic. Ang problema dun sa pinakita ko sa inyo kanina, ang dami-daming mga skeptical views. And sometimes you become, become overwhelmed, you know? Pupunayin, nang pupunayin niyang ulo, man, tapos may kaibigan ka hindi naniniwala, somebody who's a skeptic or a doubter, they come to you, they keep on asking questions. So dinami-dami ng mga itatanong ng kaibigan mo, hindi mo malama kung saan pasisimulan. Tuloy napapahiya ka sa iyong... Pananampalataya. <laughs> Totoo ba yung pinaniniwalaan ko? You even doubt your own convictions. For our purposes, in this series, we will define a skeptic as someone who rejects the biblical worldview in favor of another way of seeing the world. Note the definition. There is a worldview of Christians based on the scriptures. Any view or worldview, at least for this series, sa seryeng ito, Any view that is diametrically opposed to that Christian worldview is what we will term skepticism. Pribihin natin yan. Si Carl Sagan, ang nag-introduce, sabi niya, there is no God, the cosmos is all that is or ever was or ever will be. Man is the measure of all things. Yan ang naturalism. Pantheism, ulitin natin yung discussion. There is no transcendent God. Truth is internal. It's not external. We are all gods. Postmodernism says there is no ultimate authority. Pahala ka, gawin mo gusto mo. Walang pakihalaman. Okay? Truth is subjective. It's not objective. You can invent your own truth. Wala talagang tama. Kung gusto mo 2 plus 2 equal 7. Kanina 5 lang yan. Nadagdagan na natin ng 2. Okay yan. Basta you feel good. May kwento ko na rin nga yung ano. Nagkaroon daw na isang exam. Tinignan yung, yung IQ ng mga American students. Grabe! Kulelat yung mga American students sa mathematics. Nalamangan ng mga Japanese, mga German. Tapos pagdating sa English, <laughs> nalamangan din sila ng ibang bansa. Lahat ng, ng disciplines nalamangan yung mga Americans. Sabi nung sumulat ng libro, but Americans scored really high in self-esteem. As if to say, we may be dumb, but we feel good about it. Ganon ang postmodernism. It's really funny, but people believe it, okay? So ito mga tanong, where did I, where did life come from? In, you know, is the Bible authoritative? Why should I live? What happens after I die? See, Rabbi Zacharias, one of the leading apologists says, there are four issues of philosophy and worldviews. It is about origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. Malalim yun, kaya dito tinanslate sa questions. Where did life come from? Is the Bible authoritative? How should I live? What happens after I die? We submit to you that in all the cacophony and all the plethora of worldviews available to man, today, you can categorize those worldviews into these four classes. And the ability to categorize these worldviews will make your conversation more manageable with your friends na hindi pa naniniwala. Okay, ulitin natin. Ano? Scientific, moral, biblical, tsaka spiritual. Sabi ni Peter, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you. But do this with gentleness 
and respect. Tandaan nyo, mag-aaral tayo pa paano kausapin yung mga nagdududa, yung mga skeptiko, to engage them in faith conversation. Pero huwag nyo kalilimutan, how do you do it? Ano sabi sa last part? With gentleness and respect. Sabi nga uli ni Ravi Zacharias, there's no sense in having somebody smell a rose when you've already cut off his nose. Di ba? Kahit na ang ganda-ganda ng bibigay mo, ipuputulin mo sa kayabangan mo, You know your condescension. Puputulin mo yung ilong ng makikinig, yung tenga makikinig sa'yo, hindi makikinig sa'yo. Kaya sabi, you share the truth with gentleness and respect. Mamaya, magkakaroon tayo ng exercise kung paano natin gagawin yan. And there's a very, very simple secret on how to do it with gentleness and respect. Christian apologetics uh, is an application of scripture to unbelief. You look at apologetics as a proof. You know, apologetics doesn't mean you apologize. Apologia is the Greek term. Apology is the ability to defend and prove what you are convinced about, your convictions and your faith. So apology, apologetics can be proof. It can also be a defense. People contradict you and sometimes even ridicule you. You should be able to stand for your faith. In God. And sabi, I am not ashamed of the gospel, sabi ni Paul. It is the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. If you're not ashamed and somebody calls into question the gospel that you believe in, be ready to defend that gospel. <laughs> It can also be offense. Offense in the sense that I will attack the foolishness of people who say that everything's cool. As long as what you, you believe what you want to believe. Um... We will study that siguro sa third session natin, Moral Skepticism, where people contradict themselves in the nothing self-defeating propositions when we get there. Ito yung mga usual na tanong. Evolution explains life on earth. How could a good God send anyone to hell? The Bible is full of myths. God is in all of us. The Bible has been changed over many years. Meditation brings you closer. Ang dami-dami niya. No? Kung nakakita na kayo ng network, You know, network design Mga kable yan Nagkakalat-kalat Sa dinami-dami ng kable Hindi mo maintindihan Kung saan ka magpapasimula Magkakabuhul-buhul lahat yan Masisira lahat yung design mo So what are we trying to intend in this series? Dito sa sharing nga gawin natin Itutruan namin kayo ng skills To have conversational tools And categorizing worldviews Rather than objections So that you can effectively communicate To those who doubt the faith Ganto ang gagawin natin Uh, yung mga nagtatrabaho sa IT, ang ginagawa nila dyan, kukunin nila yung mga cables. Neatly roll them. Okay, and separate them. Sa other. Kaya ito ang gagawin natin. Sa lahat ng mga skeptic questions, ikakategorize natin. Kaya nga sinabi natin, the scientific skepticism, moral skepticism, biblical skepticism, and spiritual skepticism. Science, morals, spirituality, and the Bible. Sabi ng series natin, come, let us reason together. Ang pananampalataya mo ay makatwiran. You have a reasonable faith. A faith that can stand your ground. Meron tayong fictitious na apat na tao gagamitin natin sa ating pag-aaral. Tatawagan natin si Emma, na scientific uh, skeptic. Si Jerry, na moral skeptic. Si Isabel, na biblical skeptic. And si Ryan, marami tayong interviewin ng mga estudyante dito. They'll try to role play. At tapos sasabihin nila insights nitong apat na ito. Modern science makes God the necessary. That's what Emma says. God is an irrational crutch people used to explain what they don't understand. Science makes him unnecessary. People should decide what is right and wrong for themselves. Sabi ni Jerry, which is a moral skeptic. People should decide right and wrong for themselves. How can anyone's values be better than anyone else's? The Bible is full of myths and errors, sabi ni Isabel. The Bible is a flawed mytholo- mythological, man-made book that is no longer relevant today. Si Ryan naman, sabi niya, there are many paths to heaven. There are many paths that lead to heaven. If your beliefs are sincere, you will find enlightenment. It doesn't matter. As long as you follow what is good, you will end up in heaven. These are the issues in scientific eh? skepticism, atheism, the Big Bang, evolution, incompatibility of science and reason. 
and moral skepticism. We have questions about truth, about fairness, ethics and morality, and cultural norms. Biblical skepticism deals with the divine origin of the Bible, its reliability, its authority, and its relevance. It's spiritual skepticism, there are questions about God, questions about the afterlife, questions about meditation, mysticism, and other religions and cults. Look out for red flag words. Pag may kausap kayong mga skeptics, ito yung mga words na pwede niyong isipin. And pag nadinig nyo to sa kausap nyo, it categorizes what the issue is. The moment you hear Big Bang, evolution, mutation, science, natural selection, scientific skepticism yan. And you address the scientific skepticism. Pag nadinig nyo diversity, intolerance, judging, and truth and fairness, that's moral. Skepticism. We talk about legends and myth transmission and translation. This is about the Bible. Heaven, karma, meditation, reincarnation. These are spiritual, skeptical questions. What's the whole idea? Wag masagutin lahat ng tanong and issues. Go to the root of the question. And the root of the question will fall into one of those four categories. The moment you detect the root of that question, you'll be able to manage the conversation and probably effectively lead somebody to the truth of God's word. The key is recognizing what kind of objection the skeptic is raising so we'll know what question to ask. The goal is to get beyond surface level discussions. Isava, clarify your words, yung mga, pare born again ka na ba? Oh! Meron ka bang faith? Meron ka bang personal relationship kay Lord? Hindi yan masasakin ng mga taong walang exposure sa religion. So you gotta talk their language. Huwag, huwag kang gagamit nung tinatawag nating church lingo. Hindi ka masasakyan ng kausap mo. What is the ultimate sort of knowledge? Babalik tayo dito mamaya. It's either reason for rationalism, experience for empiricism, intuition, or mysticism and revelation from God. At this point, gusto namin i-apply yung na-cover natin so far. Kaya kumuha kami ng dalawang estudyante, si Jess at si Michelle. And uh, titignan namin, magro-role play tayo para tignan natin, i-apply natin yung natutunan dito. And let's see how effective the methods we've learned here can be in sharing the answers to a reasonable faith, makatwirang pananampalataya sa ating pakikisalamuha. And as we mingle with our friends who haven't heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we transition into the interview portion of our program, I will turn you back over to Tony, who will do a wrap-up as we prepare for the interview. Salamat po, Kuya Bing, for sharing with us the four main worldviews that are within our culture and society today. For those who are just now tuning in, you are now watching a broadcast series entitled, Come, Let Us Reason Together with Kuya Bing. In our next segment, we will simulate real-life scenarios engaging scientific, moral, biblical, and spiritual skeptics in faith conversations. We will have two students who will join us here in our studio that will help us role-play these scenarios. So stay put. Don't touch that dial. We'll be back after this short break. Hope Channel viewers are loyal, encouraging friends and neighbors to watch. Why? Our viewers believe that Hope Channel not only enhances living, but changes lives through its compelling lineup of programs. Documentaries take subscribers around the world and back through time, visiting places where history was made. Fascinating biographies open up the lives and times of people who made a difference. Travel programs transport the viewer around the world demonstrating how people work together to make a better planet. Inspirational programming challenges viewers to experience the joy of discovering faith values and offers spirituality as an important part of a balanced lifestyle. Health and lifestyle programs teach disease prevention and make healthy living simple and attractive. Hope Channel programs provide invaluable support for developing healthy relationships and strong communities. Welcome to donor-supported Hope Channel. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. 
A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter and a time to gather. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to win and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. A time for hope. Welcome back po sa inyong lahat sa ating series na Come Let Us Reason Together, says the Lord. Uh, ngayon po, magkakaroon tayo ng real-life scenarios. Isisimulate natin. Tutulungan po tayo ng dalawang student, si uh, Michelle at si Jess. Uh, dadaan natin yung ibang points na na-cover. At the same token, magkakaroon tayo ng role-playing with uh, their skeptic friends. At titignan natin how we can be more effective using those conversation tools to reach out those who have not known the gospel. Eh, pasimula tayo, Michelle at uh, Jess, ano? Eh, alam kong may mga kaibigan kayo sa eskwelahan uh, na hindi naniniwala pa sa Christian faith. So, for a while, try to put yourself in their shoes, okay? Okay. Uh, ano kaya ang sasagot nila pag ito ang tinanong niyo sa kanila? No? First question is, uh, where do you think uh, life come from? Uh, sir, basically, ang sinasagot nila is about evolution. Eh. Yung mm. tinatawag natin kung sa, sa mga scientifico is Big Bang Theory. Mm. At, at, uh, usually, pag hindi talaga naniniwala sa Diyos, uh, they grapple for whatever answers they can. Siguro minsan, sasabi pa sa inyo, sino ba nakakaalam? Nadito na naman ako. The other, the other question involving the skeptics is uh, about living and moral skepticism. So, the question you, you can ask is, how should I live? An- ano sasagot nila pag tinanong nyo yun? By doing what makes me happy. Uh, usually, no, ganun parang... Very selfish, self-centered yung Parang bakit mo, bakit ka nga mag-iisip ng, tungkol sa kapwa mo, tungkol sa Diyos Ang iniisip mo yung sarili mo uh, And then, of course, the fourth kind of question that comes because of skepticism is Is the Bible authoritative? Uh, an- anong sa palagay niyo yung usual answers na makukuha niyo doon? Uh, according to dun sa mga nakakausap ko mga kaibigan, estudyante, and the same way mas nakakatanda mm. sa akin, is yung Bible raw is medyo full of myth, legends, and everything of stuffs like that, sir. Uh, Patabas sasabihin nila na 2,000 years old yung libro, no? Bago, it's parang irrelevant. Na, okay. So, tignan natin. Na, na, nakita natin yung basic questions na daanan natin, yung categories ng skepticism. I-reviewin lang natin pa to, to, to sharpen your skills. Ano? Di ba sabi natin, look for the root idea. O, wag, don't attempt to answer all the objections. Otherwise, you'll be ma- mapupuno ka ng napakadaming tanong you cannot handle and you cannot manage the conversations. So, the whole idea is to be able to categorize the issue or the questions that they raise. So, I'll, I'll spit out some issues and questions. Sabihin niyo sa akin kung whether it's scientific, Moral, biblical, or spiritual, okay? Ang sinabi kong evolution um, explains life on earth today. Scientific. Uh, scientific. Mm-hmm. How, could the bad, how, how could a good God allow bad things to happen to people? Moral. Uh, moral. Um, there are many paths to heaven. Spiritual. Uh, spiritual, huh? The Bible is full of myths. Uh, biblical. Uh, sabi mo na yan. Um, not true for you, but it's not true for me. Moral. Uh, moral then, huh? The Bible authors were biased. Biblical. Uh, I gave away the Bible then, no? Um, Christians are 
mindless people who don't use their brains. Moral? Moral and uh, mm. siguro scientific, you know, huh? Okay. My brain. Uh, uh, my brain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, creation in six days is a fairy tale. Scientific. Uh, scientific na naman. Try pa natin. Uh, meditation. Meditation. Spiritual. Uh, uh, spiritual enlightenment. So, uh, you get the hang of things. Sabang maraming binabanggit na gano'n, papakinggan mo lang yung mga key concepts. Tapos alam mo na kung ano yung skepticism. And then you can effectively address those skepticisms. Uh, sige, tignan natin. Uh, have another exercise. Uh, ikaw, Michelle, mag-roleplay tayo. Sabihin natin di, sa, dun sa ating picture, si Jerry. Okay. Si Jerry yung may skepticism. Okay? Let's, let, let, let's try to roleplay and see if we can pick up a, a, a root idea. Okay. So, according to Jerry, mm. uh, I believe in evolution. If God has something to do with it, then He is not involved now. So, so it, it means that God is, doesn't care. So, so, God doesn't care. He's not involved. Why do you think that? Because if God has a, is involved now, then dapat lesser na lang po yung mga uh, bad stuffs or mga mm. negatives na nangyayari. Like bad mga, stuff, ba, bad stuff, negatives such as? Um, sufferings, mga ganun po, pains. Oh, pain and suffering. Do you know of anybody who is suffering right now? Um, my friend, and uh, he, he is now having his terminal illness. Mm. Si, di, nakita mo, nagpasimula si Jerry, evolution yung nilabas niya. Okay, when in fact, hindi talaga evolution. Really, deep within his heart, the, he doesn't think that God cares. Uh, he, he's so aloof, he's so removed from you. Sabi niya, but why will I believe in God? But his issue is not about evolution. His issue is a moral skepticism because he's looking for the fairness of God. Yung, yeah, yung, yung skill na dapat natin may develop, hanapin natin yung root idea. And once you find the root idea, mas madali mo siya. After all, kung magdi-discuss ka kay, kay, kay Jerry ng evolution all day, hindi siya makikinig sa'yo. Eh. Pero makikinig siya sa'yo if you start hurting with him and sympathizing with him. Paano yun ang case? Okay? Dapat si isa pang pinag-aralan natin, yung clarifying words, yung marami tayong churchism, sabi yung, yung linggo natin sa church. Okay, na, na hindi masasama. Pwede sa kanyang nung kasama mo member sa church, no? Pero pagkaibigan mo, may hirap sakyan. So, let me spit out some words na itrain yung explain din sa kaibigan nyo na walang ano, religious Sin. orientation. Sin. Uh, it's uh, following your own selfish ways mm-hmm. uh, instead of uh, doing God's uh, plan for you according to His, or mm. doing God's will that is revealed in His Word, the Bible. Then, so, maganda yun. Mas maganda yung dating kesa sa it's the transgression of God's law. Yung mga ganun, di ba? <laughs> o nga po. Masyadong, okay, Iniquities yung mga ganun masyadong, po. Eh, heavy. Mag- Mag-uugulit <laughs> yung transgression yung sinasabi mo. No? Uh, isa naman, born again. Uh, born again, sir. Ito po yung mga na, pwedeng masabi natin sa mga kaibigan natin or mga uh, classmate na and Christian na uh, katulad nung uh, being changed your uh, uh, values mm. lifestyle to uh, more uh, Christ-like life sir mm. okay Di, ibang iba yung iba iba dun sa sagot natin sa church na oh yung was baptized converted yung mga ganyan ganyan na repented yung heavy they learn, learn about that later pero yung hindi nakakaunawa you know, walang walang background sa church ang alam nila sa born again yung pagbabago and values can better relate to them whereas they have a very surface value na baguhin so in that case pag sinabi born again I'm a new person I've been born again how does it get displayed it's because of my new values or oh, faith faith Faith, um, relying and trusting to God's word, which is the Bible, when mm. when making my um, when making decisions, not mm. my. Hindi <laughs> ang 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 ganda ng ginamit mo eh, because ang maganda talaga ng translation ng faith. It's a better translation is trust. Mm. Yung trust, mas nakaka-relate pati yung mga tao yung mister sa mga 
kailangan meron kang pananampalataya. Ay, ma, bigat ako. Pero pag sinabi mong, sinabi mong magtiwala ka, di ba? Ibig sabihin, marampalataya ka sa Diyos. Okay, pero ang bigat eh. Pero magtiwala ka sa Diyos. Ibig sabihin, kung, kung nagdududo ka, ang bigat ng daladala mo, magtiwala ka lang sa Diyos. And then, people will understand faith. How much more pag sinabi na, magtiwala ka, ililigtas, papatawa ka ng kanya, magtiwala ka sa kanya. Ito, itong, itong medyo mabigat ito, tsaka heavy. Ay, yung, yung, ano yung saved? Save for me, Kuya Bing, is about ano eh, yung pag-accept mo dun sa mga kasalanan mo at pinatawad ka ng Diyos dahil yung mga uh, guilt na yan sa loob mo is mm. inaccept mm. ka na ng Panginoon kung ano ka man. Yun, uh, maganda hindi yung, oh, meron ka na bang church membership? Ano? <laughs> Ay, dito yung tamang church, puntahan mo, dun ka makakastiyak na pumunta sa ano. So, really, salvation is forgiveness. Eh, people miss that all the time. Ang pero pinakamagandang synonym ng translation ng salvation is forgiveness. Sino ba man hindi nagingin ng kapatawaran? And to think that God will forgive you, that's really, really very meaningful. Ito, ito yung, ito yung isang huli. Medyo mabigat ito. Mah- mahirap din ni paliwanag yung personal relationship with Jesus. I have a personal relationship with Jesus. Man, hindi mo akalala pang personal relationship with God. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Personal relationship. Um, parang ano po yung prayer and Bible study mm-hmm. are integral in my life mm-hmm. and this became more real kasi pag nagpe-pray po ako uh, pag ginakausap ko si God through prayer mm-hmm. si God naman nakikipag-communicate sa akin mm-hmm. through His Word which is the Bible mm-hmm. God's ano Holy Scriptures mm-hmm. Ganda naman very down to earth ano? yeah. parang yung mga personal relationship with God I'm in Christ yung mga maraming term natin ginagamit mayroon pintindihan pero ang personal relationship banks on communication. Diba? It's a two-way communication. Now, how in the world can you claim that you have a personal relationship with Christ? You don't communicate with Him. Ang ganda kaya. Paano ako magkukommunicate sa Diyos? I pray to Him. Pag nag-pray ka, diba? Kinakausap mo siya. Kinakausap ka rin ba ng Diyos? Through Bible? Through the Bible. And somehow, when you tie both prayer and the Bible together, that communication becomes very effective and powerful. Tapos yung lalong lumalalim yung relationship niyo. Hindi nga, nagkaroon kayo ng idea, no? Basta pag may gagamit na term, iwasan nyo na gamitin yung churchy-churchy na mm-hmm. definitions, Dabat, mga term. Kaya lang nyo, common ground. Yung, you you try to put yourself in the other person's shoes, tapos i-relate mo para masagot, okay? Role play naman kay Emma. Si Emma yung scientific skeptic. Okay? The pretend mo just na ikaw si Emma. Okay, let's start the conversation. Uh, meron pong good friend na pangalan si Emma. So medyo scientifically, eh, yung perspective niya is about science. Sabi niya, it is irrational to believe in God. Pero there's no proof at all nga raw po. Mm. Eh, w- what do you mean by God? You know, w- what is irrational in believing in such a being? Mm. Uh, it is scientific, Kuya Bing. Mm. Scientific, uh, by scientific you mean... Uh, God is not an observable reality. You know, you cannot sense Him. Therefore, because you cannot sense Him, He cannot be real. Exactly. Hmm. Kasi nga po, dun nga po sa mga uh, perspective niya, uh, hindi mo naman pwedeng ipasok sa laboratory or test tube yung particles ng Panginoon mm-hmm. para tingnan kung ano mang meron dun sa yeah. mga molecules nun or everything so, and everything stuff like you know, that. Hindi mo ma-prove sa experiment, figment lang na imagination mo. Well, Have you ever thought where this universe that we live in uh, came from? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it is uh, originated itself. Ah, self-originating, ha? Huh? Uh, tignan ko nga yung isipin natin yung self-originating na yun. How do you think uh, that the universe that's self-originating, the original itself, began the universe without being the universe first. <laughs> Medyo, I'm, I'm being very vague here. Let me rephrase my question. It can, can something come out of nothing? Uh, Kuya Bing, sa statement mo yan, I think it's no way. Eh. Uh, hindi, 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 hindi. Nothing comes from nothing. You know, nothing ever could. So, if I tell you that I'm being rational if I believe in God, Uh, because I don't believe in something coming out of nothing, no, the alternative ko is maniwala ako na self-originating universe, which, which means something from nothing. Okay, between the two, what will take more faith? Uh, dun po sa mga sinabi nyo at sa mga napag-usapan natin, well, let me take more of that. Mm, see, they, they, so you, you get the point. Ang ginawa, ang ginawa lang natin, 
we kept on asking questions, respecting the person, mm -hmm. drawing what the person is trying to say, yes. trying to have the person explain himself, and then slowly leading them into the truth that we want to share. You know, pinaka secreto. Secreto is ask questions, respectfully ask questions, and then you can manage the conversation and lead him towards God. It was Blaise Pascal who said, men despise religion. They hate it and are afraid it may be true. The cure for this is to show that religion is not contrary to reason, but worthy of reverence and respect. Next, make it attractive. Make good men wish it were true, and then show that it is. Diyan po nakita natin na uh, with simple conversation tools, kahit na yung diehard skeptic, yung talagang nagdududa, yung uh, skeptic kong kaibigan natin, can still be open to the truth and reality of God and His Word. Uh, meron akong isang kwentong naalala dito sa ginagawa natin. Meron daw isang bata na pinagalitan ng tatay niya, paano magpapasko eh? Eh, ang ginawa ng bata, <laughs> kinuha yung wrapping paper na gold. Eh, mamahalin eh, medyo kapos sila sa pera. Sabi ng tatay, don't you understand we're hard up today? Wala tayong masyadong pera. Tapos itatapon mo pa yung wrapping paper. Pero tatay, sabi niya, Dad, uh, I used the wrapping paper to wrap this gift for you. Tahiya yung tatay, you know, di, sorry siya sa anak niya. Then, binuksan niya yung regalo. Pagbukas ng regalo, walang laman. Lalong nagalit yung tatay. Don't you ever know that when you give somebody a gift, there must be something inside? Umiyak yung bata, sabi niya. But dad, before I close the box and wrap it with the wrapping paper, I blew kisses into the box so I can give you all the love that I can give. You know, minsan ganun ng Diyos, He tries to blow kisses and tries to show us His love and His grace. Problema sa atin, nagagalit tayo because of the pain and so many things that happens in our life. Um, If we only open our eyes, we will see His grace. Kaya doon sa mga kaibigan natin, skeptics, ang panalangin natin and what we attempt to do is to open their minds to that God who even if they couldn't see is real, really willing to give them love and grace even now. Mag-pray tayo kasama ng ating viewers. Dear Father, thank Thee for the session we've had making us understand that you're there and you're not silent, you're concerned about us, that you're gracious, that you're loving. Thank you, dear Father, by the tools that you've learned this session in this program, we can have the opportunity to work with you and the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of our friends who are skeptical about you in fact, even open our own eyes to your grace every day. Teach us to use all these tools, not only to share with our friends the good news of salvation, but even use those tools to strengthen and build our faith in you. To this end, dear Father, bless us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Uh, thank you, Kuya Bing, and to our two students, Jess and Michelle. Well, to sum things up, let's have a quick review. In a nutshell, there are four main worldviews that saturate our culture and the world that we know it. Uh, first is theism, and that's the belief in God and creation. Naturalism, that's the um, non-existence of God and evolution. Pantheism is our humanistic uh, being going towards divinity and postmodernism is the mindset in which that there is no absolute truth. Well, in our application segment, we saw a simulation in expressing faith in different scenarios with scientific, moral, biblical, and spiritual skeptics. Remember that Paul, in the moments of conversations of faith, was gentle and respectful to those whom he shared 
his faith with. We have a divine call from God to reason that we may know that the God of the Bible is alive and the real owner of the universe. To end, I'd like to invite all of you to tune back in, same time, same channel. Next episode, Kuya Bing will share in detail about scientific skepticism. My prayer is that you've learned something new and you can apply it immediately to your Christian lifestyle of sharing and expressing the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ. This is Come, Let Us Reason Together with Kuya Bing. Till next time, blessings.